Mm, baby, I don't understand it You changing, I can't stand it My heart can't take this damage And the way I feel can't stand it mm, Baby, I don't understand this You changing, I can't stand it My heart can't take this damage And the way I feel can't stand it Mm, baby, I don't understand this Girl, you make it hard for me Girl, you make it hard for me Girl, you make it hard for me mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl, you make it hard for me Girl, you make it hard for me Girl, you make it hard for me Mm, baby, I don't understand this You changing, I can't stand it My heart can't take this damage And the way I feel can't stand it mm, Baby, I don't understand this You changing, I can't stand it My heart can't take this damage And the way I feel can't stand it Mm, baby, I don't understand this You changing, I can't stand it My heart can't take this damage And the way I feel can't stand it mm, Baby, I don't understand this
We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. You can take your seats. Dear brethren, the word of God instructs us to rejoice with those who rejoice and to mourn with those who mourn. As a church, we are family, we are one family, family of God, and we consider Abel to be our brother, not just a member of the church, but a true brother. We really feel the loss together. But as it is written, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And we know our brother Abel really loved the Lord. In all things, we give thanks, for this is the will of God. Tonight, we come here to mourn with all of us, with, with you and with everybody. And also to comfort ourselves through fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We pray that the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, will comfort us in these very, very trying times. There's no one else who can comfort us like the Holy Spirit. So Lord, we pray that you will help us and be with us as we go through the sermon. Thank you. God bless. Verse 1. 
For we know that if our earthly house or this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heaven. Second Corinthians five verse one. Que le Seigneur bénisse, bénisse la lecture de l'Écriture. May the Lord bless the reading of the Scripture. Church to my brother Justin.
was always first person for me to ask. Um, and we have the time to go and play basketball. Um, he's always up there saying yes. Um, and what's one great about him was he inspired me to push my limits in art and design. As he was very ambitious in his The second scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 57. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this incorruptible, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave. Where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Here ends the second scripture reading. We'll now invite the family um, to share the tribute to God. Abel was a kind and caring friend, a brother and a son, who always believed in himself and others, and would never think of anything he couldn't do. I remember as a kid, 
father was a teacher and since he was a respect, respectable teacher, other teachers will refrain from disciplining us. And within that, he used that as a, an excuse to misbehave sometimes. And one teacher had enough of that and decided to chase him around the school, the school grounds. And at that time, the way he was running, I was just thinking, he can run. He got some legs on him. Our bells were full of excitement energy from the moment he woke up to the moment he fell asleep. I remember the first time we came to the UK, um, he fell asleep on the plane and he woke up. And um, my mother, we went to a car and he fell asleep in the car. And he heard a um, plane passing by. He woke up and started screaming, playing, 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 thinking he was still in the plane. And that was just a silly little moment of us. Again, this was our first time in the plane, so it was just silly. Um, as we grew older, I got became more mature, very responsible, and always said what he meant and meant what he said. It would be impossible to change his mind onto anything once he decides that he wanted to do it. He can't change his mind when it comes to that. Um, he was so determined to play football and he started playing, I believe, uh, for Millwall Academy. Whenever Abel would see my work, he would always give his 100% um, opinion on it, even if I didn't like it. I would spend hours creating a piece of art. Within two minutes, I showed it to him and he would just give me his critic on it. And push me towards perfection before I post it. And I would do the same thing to him as well. Uh, he was into music. Even though he knew, that he knew nothing about music, he will still come and tell me about it. What do I think of the beat, the song, the lyrics? I know nothing about songs. I'll just tell him, I change this, change that, and he'll be like, thank you, bravo. And then he will do it. So knowing that I know nothing, but he will still do it. That's how much he care about my opinion. Um, Abel has always been creative. Um, he was a poet at heart. He had a note full of original poem, lyrics, songs, and other materials that he used to exp uh, express himself straight from the heart. He had a very creative mindset. He wanted to become an architect, and then he decided he wanted to be an aerospace engineer. So he started studying that. And because he had a big heart, he decided he wanted to become uh, to start studying nursing and he started to help other people similar to his situation. So he started studying nursing. I've always had my back, no matter what. I knew I could have relied on him on everything, and he knew he could do the same. He made a song called My Only Brother just talking about the love he had for me and how much he appreciated me. Abel loved his friends, his family, our younger sister, Sammy, our younger brother, Cedric. He loved everyone. Abel, you were a friend, my supporter, my critic, my inspiration, my competition, but above all else, you are my brother, who I love very much, and I know you're in a better place now. So thank you.
saying, I always remember my brother for his determination and his desire to succeed by the way he did. Even if he knew that he wasn't really intelligent with that, that wasn't really what he was meant to do in life. He, was still, he still wanted to do well in it. I remember days when me and him would be in our, in our bedroom and just like, just like the lyrics, like, just for no reason, just because like, we were chilling. And I took it as a joke, but he took it serious and he knew he wasn't good at it, but what, what, was, what made him different to me was that he was determined and he wanted to do good in it. And he just kept on and he was one of those guys where when you look at him, you know he's going to become something big in the future, which, it, which, makes, which makes him even more sad because, yeah, my brother was intelligent, he was talented, and yeah, he had a purpose and it was taken away from him. So, yeah, it's sad we are all truly miss him. Yeah. I love him, I miss him. Yeah, thank you very much. Amen. Our prayers goes to the family that God will strengthen you and keep you as you go through this time of um, bereavement. Amen. Let's welcome Lady Pastor Emma to share something. She's been, she was his pastor from I think 2009 to about 2012. So let's welcome Lady Pastor Emma. Bonsoir à tout le monde. Je suis très désolé ce soir, mais nous avons Dieu. Je peux te dire que celui qui a commencé à faire les bonnes choses dans ta vie, il va continuer. Il n'a pas encore fini. Alors, sois confiance en Dieu. Il est bon, il est fidèle. Il va faire. Il le fera dans ta vie. I'm going to attempt to say a few words and I'd like to call any of the French church members who are here this evening. Um, I can see Atambu, I can see Zelia, I can see Jacob, I can see Alida. We just want to honor the memory of our brother Abel. Abel and his family, Irene, Monsieur Ajay, Cyrus, Cedric, and Samuel, who was born in the French church at that time, were very strong and staunch members of the French church, like Liz Francophone, Gabelle Liz. And they supported the church in everything that we did. Il ne m'a jamais donné ta bouche, sa bouche. Ça veut dire que he was never rude to me. He was so sweet, so lovable, and so shy. He got saved in the French church. He gave his life to Jesus Christ in the French church. He took part in every activity that we, we had in the French church. He sang in the choir, Les Oliviers. Tu, tu souviens? He sang in the choir. He ministered at, at in Collindale. And when Charlton, the Charlton branch came to the French church in 2010, Abel was there to do anything that needed to be done. So he was a much loved brother of the church. To me, you were just like a son whom I could call upon to do anything in the church. And I saw him growing up. By the time he left the French church, I think he was 16 years. So I was his pastor between the years of 2009 and 2012. Yes, where he could easily have become very um, stubborn. But he loved the Lord. We learned a few songs in the French church and he tolerated me because I'm not a natural French speaker. So I would make mistakes as I attempted to share from the French Bible, but that didn't deter him on his journey to know the Lord. We are going to miss him as a staunch member of the French church. He did so much in the time that he was with us. And his family, they were there, they supported the church. They exposed us to French cuisine. Yes, sir. Je vous dis. I don't even remember some of the names, but they enabled us to enjoy francophone 
the way the Francophone experience life. And above all, the whole family loved the Lord. They were in church together. Mother, father, children, and little Samuel, whom Abel used to love carrying around. He helped his mother so much. So, I'd just like to read a scripture in French, and if Abel were to be here, I'm sure he'd giggle a bit, but he'd tolerate the accent. I'm just going to read Psalm 23. And just the first verse. I'm just reading the very first verse, which says, L'Eternal est mon berger, je ne manquerai de rien. Il me fait reposer dans les verts pâturages. We believe that Abel is with the Lord because he loved the Lord. He spent his days in church getting to know the Lord. He tried to do his best for the Lord. He took part in church activities. He participated in everything that was being done. He went on outreach with me as we tried to win the Francophone community over to Jesus Christ. We were a family, and I believe we still are a family, even though we have been separated for some years now. But that love that we found in the French church still continues. And I believe that it will still continue. May the Lord bless this family. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord's grace be upon you. May the Lord enable you to even draw closer to him in this, at this time, in your grief. May Jesus Christ become very real to you. Even as you remember and release into the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. The time that Abel was with us. All things work together for good for them who love the Lord. And Jesus Christ's love for you cannot be measured with any other love. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Emma the French Church. We'll now take the second hymn Will your ankle hold in the storms of life? Shall we rise to our feet?
Lucy Akwa Harrison. life, the short life that he led, I could see that he made an impact. Now, after hearing these, some of these um, tributes, I come to now understand something that um, now I think back and I think, okay, he was so determined to do things. Everything that we're doing in the church, he would like to do it. He would like to be part of it. And sometimes I was wondering, I mean, why don't you relax? But I can see that that is the determination. When he determines to do something, he really wants to do it. And I thank God, as I said, I have learned, I have learned from such a wonderful life. The Bible says in Matthew 5, 4, I don't know whether you'd be able to have it, but Matthew 5, 4 talks about the fact that it says, Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who mourn. Amazing. But the Bible will say that we are blessed when we mourn. I don't get it. I thought I am blessed when I am happy. The Bible probably definitely true than me says that you are blessed when you mourn. Why? Because you will be comforted. And that is a thing. That, that, that comfort brings more than you can carry. Paul said, that I've asked the Lord to remove a certain pain. Three times I've prayed. Paul was the one that the Lord used to write the New Testament for us to know the Gentiles, for us to know about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And he prayed, I mean, he can heal, he was raising the dead, you name it. But he had a pain and he prayed, and it didn't go. Wow. This is the same person that prayed, people died, he raised them up, people were sick, he prayed for them, they were healed. But when he was sick, and he prayed three times, no change. But the Lord said, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. Sometimes we like to depend on trouble-free life and we think it's much better than the grace of God. I love to have a trouble-free life, but I've come to realize that the grace of God is more than trouble-free life. The Bible says that a man born of a woman, his days are few and full of troubles. That is what the Bible says. I didn't say this. So it's telling me that for us to really, really enjoy our short time, which the Bible says that it can be full of troubles, it says, Look for the grace of God. Look always for the grace of God. So I'm here to encourage us. 
that's painful as it is for us all. And thinking back, I'm just saying, oh my, I wish I'd known him even a bit better. Because from the testimonies of his friends, I could learn that, wow, and even the brothers, the way he is persistent. I just wish I'd have known him even a bit more. But we are sad. We will lie. We are sad that's happened. But we also believe that as a child of God, God has plans for him. God has plans for him. It's not everything that we able to explain. I remember watching the um, football match and uh, England were losing and I was wondering what what's happening. But in the mind of the coach, he brought somebody off and brought somebody on. I didn't agree who he brought on. But that coach knows why he takes somebody off and brings another person on. I had my argument. Why this person? Why not this one? But that coach has got the statistics of each player, has got the history of each player, has got everything. So in his mind, he knows who to take off and who to bring on. But the rest of us were arguing and saying, well, why not this one? That coach, the perfect coach, I trust, he always wins and he knows who to take off and who to bring on. Who are we to question him, even though we don't fully understand? I just will end my little exhortation. I don't know whether you have this. John chapter 16, verse 7. John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. He says, I'll tell you the truth. It is expedient. That means it is advantage for you that I go and that I will send you the powerful man? No. The healer? No. He says, I will send you the comforter. God knows that in this life we need a comforter. What we need is a comforter. And when the comforter comes, he does more more. Just that sometimes we don't want the comforter. We don't want the comforter. We want other things. But Jesus is saying, I will give you the best thing that you need is the comforter. And I pray, I pray, mommy, daddy, the family, that watch it. You watch it. God will not take something as precious as Abel, and leave you disadvantaged. He says, it is advantage for you that you have opportunity to fellowship with the Comforter. You watch your life as you accept the ministration of the Comforter. My problem, the problem I'm thinking is, you will see, you will see the benefit, the grace of God the goodness of God in this family that I'm praying that you not forget him. That is my prayer because people when they do better they tend to forget their creator. He says it is advantage that I have come to pay you this visit. We love Jesus to be here to raise our brother. But Jesus is saying it's better, it is better that you have the ministration of the Holy Spirit. Just watch your life and see. People will be asking questions 
What is so special about this family? What makes them so special? We thought they should be down there. Look at them, each one of them. Because you accepted the ministration of the Comforter. I'm talking about my life. Give me the Comforter any day. Give me the Comforter any day. And I'm praying, don't forget him when he's done that miracle in your life. It's an advantage that in your home, especially, you have the opportunity to fellowship with the Holy Spirit to comfort you. You'll be blessed. For those of us here, as I take my seat, I want us to remember one thing. There was a day that a particular wonderful boat was made, ship, let's call it, called the Titanic. When the Titanic was made, it was, it was great, the, the best vessel that everybody wanted to talk about. People bought their tickets and made their journey on the Titanic. Now, when they were getting on the Titanic, what mattered to most of them was their status. How many children do you have? What money do you have? Which cabin have you paid for? What job do you do? Or you work in Pricewaterhouse, you work at this place, you've got five kids, you are doing this, you're the bank manager. These were all the statistics that meant a lot to them. People were actually excited that they got the ensuite um, um, part of, the, uh, of this wonderful vehicle. At that time, the list had all these things. Are you married? You're not married? Are you single? Have you got children? Have you got a job? Are you this? I mean, these were the statistics that were important at the beginning of the journey. At the end, there was only one statistic that was important. Those that were saved and those that perished. Maybe today, you're sitting here thinking, this is more important this is more important. I'm having my education like this. I am having this. I've got this. At the end of the journey, I'm here to tell you, and I thank God for Abel's life. That which mattered, are you saved or you perished? That was the only thing. Not the money that you earn. Not the number of children you have. Not the house that you bought in Ivory Coast. Are you saved? Or you perish. May it be, may it be that after this service, we will think about our lives and know that at the end of that journey, at the end of that journey, nothing else will matter. Will you save or you perish? I pray that we have the same mindset of a bed, that through it all, through the challenges he went through, through the difficulties, he never forgot his God. At the end, he is saved. And that is all that matters. That's what that matters. I want to give somebody an opportunity, and I'm pretty sure if Abel was here in the flesh, he would tell us, he would speak, and say that this is what I want you to do. A gift of your life. That may it not be that at the end you perish. As I say this prayer, if you've not thought about it, but as I was saying this, your heart was thinking that in, in fact, I need, I need my name to be part of that list at the end. That I am saved. The Bible says that with your heart you believe and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. Not your money, not where you live, but your faith. You want to say this prayer with me as you believe in your heart. And the Bible says, He will come and make you a new person. For who the Son sets free is free indeed. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you just as I am. I believe you died for me. And I want my name to be written in the book of 
life. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for every good thing you've given me. Above all, salvation. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. is are you saved or did you perish amen right uh, just a few announcements i think there's refreshments out there um and if i believe we came with something to support the family of abel if you have any um monetary contribution just to support them through this time there will be the people at the back Please, yeah, there's a table at the back there that you can leave your your notes, a card, and some sort of monetary um, blessing for the family. Amen. Okay, uh, let's rise to our feet as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this evening. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for the participation of your spirit, the participation of the comforter, the, co the participation of our helper. Lord, your word says that your spirit helps us in our infirmities. He helps us when we are weak. He helps us when we don't know what to do. He helps us when we don't know what to say. He helps us when we don't understand what we're going through. Your Spirit helps us. We thank you for the communion and the fellowship that we have with him. Father, we pray for ourselves and even for Abel's family especially, that you will keep them. Lord, keep them. As their minds are stayed on you, may they have perfect peace. Grant them peace. Let the peace of God, that pass it all human understanding, flood their hearts, flood their homes, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you release a blessing from heaven. A blessing that man cannot give. A blessing that is only from you. The Lord, you will do that only, which, only you can do, which is to bless them, to keep them. Father, even for the sake of Abel, may this family be blessed. May they experience blessing. May they experience blessing. May they experience blessing. Father, you know what blessing that they need in their home. May it not be far from them. May it not be far from them. We pray that, Lord, they will be called a blessed home. They will be called a blessed people. May they not see this as a loss. But may they see it as an opportunity for you to come in and to bless them. Father, we pray for his friends. May they learn from his life. May they be as determined as Abel. May they go through life strengthened and empowered. May they know you even as Abel knew you in this lifetime. Father, we pray for ourselves the Lord would also consider life after this life. That we not go about our lives just seeking for earthly things, but we'll be heavenly minded, even as Abel was. Father, help us, Lord. Help us to be pleasing to you. I pray for his dad, oh God, that you'll give him strength to keep his family. Give him wisdom Give him words of wisdom to encourage his wife, to encourage his sons, to encourage his daughter. I pray for his brothers, Lord. Maybe they are not able to express their emotions, Lord. But I pray that whatever they are going through, you would help them. Lord, even in the dream of the night, 
May you speak to them. May you answer their questions, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may take your seats or if you want something to drink, let's refresh my hands. God bless you.
right now. We come before you to surrender our love into your heart. Surrender and commit this family into your heart, oh Lord. You know that your love is tremendous, is great, is wonderful. In the scripture, he said that you love so much the world and you say it. You are begotten so Jesus Christ. And whoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. Jesus, thank you for your salvation. on behalf of Jason Dorulo, I'm the manager, and basically we just came for Chinatown, um, to Chinatown basically for New Year's, and uh, what's your full name? My full name is Kulta Kinte, I was a attack, dead, 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 dead. J'ai la bombe sur mon portable, donc si je peux connecter avec ton USB, là je peux jouer. Là, c'est la rue. Donc, quand tu es tout de l'autre côté et que tu arrives à garder l'air, tu n'as plus de la rue Saint-Martin, tu es dans le faubourg Saint-Martin. Donc, quand on voit les, les trucs là, les, les signes, ça dit Saint-Martin. Okay, but what are you going to tell me now? 
Uh, when the cameras are rolling, wait, is it on? Is it on? Oh, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, so. Okay, yeah. Sick. You got two, yeah? It's a video, bro. Of oh, course. Cool. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no hype this, no hype this. We take that down a notch. Where, where, we are going to the beach. Yeah. This is a very special Why is it special? Is it a special place in your heart? Well, it could be if it turns out to be really good. Oh, I bet. 
Merci Père Éternel que toute ta gloire soit à toi. Au nom de Jésus. Amen. Dig your hand deep down into your pocket and just bless the family at the back there. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for us to like get going now? Stand here, yeah, thank you. God bless you. Not go out, but go to the back and give something. Thank <laughs> you. 
there's food for us, amen. So if we could please use this door, the food is ready. So if you could please use this door and go and serve yourself, please, please. So we don't waste the food. Yeah? Thank you. God bless. Let your Holy Spirit 
Alléluia. Il a parlé encore le Seigneur. Tiens, 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 la vie de la sœur Zika. Elle a une voix chaude, forte. Une voix qui fait vivre. Alléluia. Et vraiment, je suis heureux de pouvoir l'accompagner dans le background. Et je voudrais présenter quelqu'un qui est très important, le professeur, le professeur de notre fils, qui voulait dire quelque chose. Le professeur, le professeur, si tu es là, tu viens. Voilà, le professeur de notre fils. On acclame le Seigneur pendant qu'il arrive. On va dire un témoignage par rapport au fils. Et bonsoir, mes frères et sœurs. Euh, Abel, le nom évoque pour les chrétiens et non chrétiens, mais ceux qui connaissent la Bible, le drame. Le nom Abel, c'est la personnification du drame. Dans la Bible, il y a une, per une personne qui s'appelle Abel, qui est accompagnée d'un frère qui s'appelle Caïn. Les deux sont nés d'une même mère. Mais il se trouve que, pour la grâce et la puissance de Dieu, alors, Abel a eu un comportement qui a plus plu à Dieu, mais qui est devenu un drame, un drame finalement que Dieu lui-même a pris. J'ai comme l'impression que c'est une leçon qu'on doit tirer de cette situation. Alors, notre fils s'appelle Abel. Abel, je l'ai rencontré dans une situation qui était aussi dramatique pour, la, pour, pour nous, en tant que professionnels, parce que nous étions sous une, euh, une période de grâce. Je travaillais pour, pour un secteur, un secteur, un secteur d'ingénierie de, de, et nous étions euh, sous une grâce d'une période d'une année où on devait prouver qu'on avait la capacité intellectuelle et administrative de pouvoir gérer euh, une, une classe ou bien une structure d'ingénierie à Sadak. Alors c'est en cette période là que nous avons entrepris donc de recruter des étudiants qui avaient la capacité d'honorer notre, notre, notre démarche. C'est dans ce contexte-là que euh, Abel et sa mère sont venus se faire recenser. Alors, euh, on a levé la barrière, la barre de sélection le plus haut, effectivement, pour pouvoir euh, honorer notre engagement. Alors, à cette évidence-là, nous dit déjà que le fait que nous ayons choisi Abel, c'est qu'il avait déjà des compétences. Mais dans son cas particulier, ce n'était pas seulement les compétences qu'il a démontrées à cette période-là, mais il avait une capacité, il avait une ambition qui était extraordinaire, en ce sens que immédiatement, dès que le cours a commencé, il a témoigné de sa capacité de faire des études de engineering et il a démontré une dimension, une dimension qui était extraordinaire par rapport aux gens de son, de son âge. D'abord, au point de vue comportement, au point de vue, euh, au point de vue euh, passion. Alors, euh, j'ai découvert beaucoup de capacités en lui. Et moi, qui plus tard a découvert qu'il était Nivalien comme moi, euh, j'ai donc doublé de sel en fin de l'été. Et je l'ai aidé dans le contexte du fait que nous serions des Noirs qui apprenions l'ingénierie. Et c'était dans, dans un contexte aussi où nous avions, devions prouver à la communauté de Savak que quand bien même le marché n'était pas approprié pour pouvoir recruter le personnel conforme. Il fallait que nous, si on prouve que ce personnel-là, il n'est pas, si pas idéal pour la consommation locale, on les formait pour leur avenir. Et que la Grande-Bretagne étant très grande, il n'était pas obligé de travailler à cela. Donc nous avons fait cette demande-là, donc nous avons donné une année de grâce. Alors Abel, dans ce contexte-là, il est devenu un tremplin pour nous. Un tremplin et effectivement, il a montré qu'il était vraiment utile et lui aussi voulait apprendre. Et en plus de cela, il avait besoin d'un modèle. Et là, c'est là que Abel et moi nous nous rejoignons. Autant que j'avais besoin de quelqu'un pour pouvoir supporter mon ambition, autant aussi il avait besoin de quelqu'un pour, support, pour le supporter, en fait, lui, lui aussi, d'accomplir ce qu'il devait accomplir. Alors, euh, malheureusement, pendant qu'on se prépare à tout cela, pour satisfaire nos ambitions, et pour nous-mêmes et pour nos parents, quelque part, inconsciemment, dans la vie d'Abel, Abel, dans la Bible, a voulu servir Dieu autant qu'il pouvait. Mais c'est vrai que son choix 
a été mal lu par son frère. C'est ainsi que nous sommes entourés de circonstances de vie qui, quelquefois, interprètent des choses. Voilà que Abel, ce jeune garçon très enthousiaste, très poli et très rangé, il ne savait pas que quelque chose autour, rôdait autour de lui. C'est ainsi que, au cours de cette année, euh, vers la fin du, de, de l'année scolaire, un malaise l'a pris, et puis graduellement, euh, l'intensité de, de sa passion a commencé à baisser. Alors c'est ainsi que moi-même, j'ai fait tout ce que je pouvais faire, en dehors de mes capacités professionnelles, pour pouvoir contacter les parents, afin que nous travaillions ensemble pour pouvoir trouver un remède à sa situation. Mais c'est vrai que... Oh là là, je sais pas... Excusez-moi, quelquefois, nous sommes dans une circonstance où, quelquefois, les mots sont inadéquats pour pouvoir exprimer effectivement ce qu'on ressent tout le temps. Donc, euh, excusez-moi. Alors, euh, on a travaillé ensemble, en dehors et en, pendant l'école, afin de l'aider. Et moi, je demandais, puisque j'étais le responsable de, de cette structure-là, alors j'ai donc, donc demandé à mes collègues, parce que quand il est tombé malade, j'ai donc demandé à mes collègues de lui donner une extension afin qu'il puisse finir ce, ce, son cours. Alors on est resté là un mois de plus afin de l'aider. Et effectivement, elle a réussi, il a fait son certificat. Alors il fallait donc le préparer et lui, lui faire gagner une place, une place à l'université. C'est ainsi que. J'ai approché les parents aussi, et on a travaillé ensemble afin qu'ils puissent sécuriser une place à l'université de Salban. De Salban. Donc euh, à Salban, on a essayé de faire l'enregistrement, mais je pense que ça n'a pas mordu. Et puis euh, on, a, on, a, on a cherché d'autres éléments. Mais euh, Abel a continué euh, quelque part d'autre. Et à ma grande surprise, euh, six mois plus tard, j'ai appris bien ses contacts et il m'appelle et il me dit euh, euh, est-ce que tu peux me donner une référence parce que je suis en train de faire une demande pour aller euh, dans une école d'aviation donc euh, j'ai besoin que tu me fasses une référence ce qui m'a fait plaisir donc euh, effectivement on est resté en contact et le dernier contact ça ne date pas de longtemps euh, je n'ai appris de ses nouvelles mais c'est de sa mère qui me dit que euh, effectivement quelque chose lui était arrivé on ne le trouvait plus on a pu euh, on ne savait plus trop bien où il se trouvait. Et euh, un peu plus tard, la police aussi m'a contacté euh, pour voir si j'avais de cette nouvelle. Et puis, malheureusement, malheureusement, j'ai pris la triste nouvelle que, effectivement, son corps physique avait été euh, identifié euh, à la sortie de, des eaux de l'ombre de l'Amitans. Donc, aujourd'hui, je suis venu là pour témoigner que c'était un garçon qui était plein d'ambition. Mais la vie est telle que la mère poule avec ses poussins. Les poussins sortent des neuf. Mais quand les poussins et sa mère poule, et les poussins et la mère poule se promènent, Alors, sous la vigilance de la mère poule, un épervier qui sort aussi d'un neuf vient ravir le poussin. Et avec un gros cœur, la mère poule se bat. Mais c'est tout que, à l'évidence, elle ne peut rien faire. Dans la jungle, tu as le buffle avec ses corps immenses, mais le veau est dévoré par des lions, et le buffle, malgré sa masse, ne peut rien faire. Un éléphant, malgré sa masse, sont tout petits et dévorés par des lions, et l'éléphant, le, 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 malgré sa masse, ne peut rien faire. Abel et Caïn, Sort du même sang, mais l'un a été. L'un a été le criminel de l'autre, le tueur de l'autre. Mais tout cela, Dieu le créateur, le maître de toute la scène, il prend note. Et toujours est il qu'il est au contrôle de tout, quelles que soient nos souffrances, ce que nous ne devons pas faire, c'est de ne pas. Lui dit qu'il n'est pas Dieu, parce qu'on ne peut rien faire de ça. Il faut accepter que nous sommes là pour des expériences, comme une rose qui donne son parfum, sa couleur, et qui n'a que toute durée du temps que Dieu lui a donné. Il en est aussi pour les hommes aussi. Il en est aussi, donc, euh, maman, je pense que Abel est venu te prouver effectivement que tu peux enseigner, que tu peux produire, 
et que tu peux être une maman. Le minimum de joie qu'il t'a accordé, je pense que c'est ce qu'il est venu faire. Donc, euh, prions que son âme se pose. Je vous remercie. Alléluia. On applaudit le Seigneur pendant les professeurs. À sa place, il est déjà pris du matin. Et nous sommes là jusqu'à 2h du matin. Alors, j'ai appelé l'organisation sociale des femmes ivoiriennes. Si elles sont prêtes, on applaudit le Seigneur pendant que les femmes s'apprêtent. Elles ont quelque chose de très, 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 très important à, à dire et à faire. C'est très important. Là où les femmes s'élèvent, il n'y a plus quelque chose de spécial qui se passe. Allez-vous. Ça va le chercher. Voilà. Et donc, euh, j'ai retenu quelque chose de très spécial dans ce que le professeur a dit. C'est que euh, ma belle était sur le chemin. Je de... fais la différence. Voilà. Choisir un site d'ingénieur, ça va bien. Ce n'est pas donné à tout le monde. Surtout les gens de son âge. Généralement, quand nous partons dans les, dans, les, dans, les, dans les rues, les gens de son âge sont en train de faire autre chose. Vous voyez Et lui, il a travaillé de telle sorte qu'on négocie une place à l'université pour lui. Et ça me fait chaud au cœur qu'on ait encore des jeunes gens. De, de la trente d'appel qui cherche toujours à faire la différence. Alléluia. Et ma prière de ce soir, c'est que euh, le Seigneur nous donne encore d'autres appels. D'autres appels qui seront cette fois-ci euh, euh, ouverts et dirigés par le Seigneur Jésus jusqu'au bout. Parce qu'ils arrivent à la fin de leurs études. Jusqu'à ce qu'ils arrivent à, 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 à parfaire ce pour lequel ils sont venus faire sur terre, donner la joie satisfaisante dans le cœur de leurs parents, appartenir à toute la nation et faire la différence, être à la tête et non à la queue. Alléluia. Je crois que le Seigneur nous fera grâce. Le Seigneur nous fera grâce d'avoir des jeunes gens à prendre ta paix. Je crois que. L'organisation sociale des femmes ivoiriennes est là. Nous allons acclamer le Seigneur pour leur vie. Et nous acclamer comme s'ils avaient soif de la vie. Vous avez peur de quelque chose. Nous acclamer Jésus-Christ de Nazareth. C'est lui qui a fait ça. Alléluia. C'est lui qui a donné, c'est lui qui a repris. Et son nom est glorifié. Alléluia. Tu sais ce qu'il fait Est bon. Pour tous ceux qui l'aiment, femme, vous avez une vie. Que Dieu vous bénisse. Alléluia. Je vous remercie le Seigneur pour votre vie ce soir. Et nous sommes tous là. Et nous sommes tous là, comme vous, pour soutenir notre soeur Irène et son mari Adier, qui sont éplorés. Nous sommes venus soutenir non seulement le groupe et notre soeur qui est avec nous à l'organisation aussi nous sommes aussi venus pleurer notre fils Alléluia gloire à Jésus la Bible nous déclare dans le livre d'Ecclésias 3 au verset 1 à 4 qu'il y a un temps pour toutes choses sous les yeux de notre Seigneur Alléluia pourquoi la Bible nous dit qu'il y a un temps pour toutes choses sous les yeux des cieux. Parce que tout ce que nous faisons, il y a quelqu'un qui prend note. Il y a quelqu'un qui nous regarde. Il y a quelqu'un qui est là. Il nous voit. Nous allons et venons. Alléluia. Gloire à Jésus. Et il nous déclare qu'il y a un temps. Il y a un temps. Il y a un temps. Il y a un temps pour naître. Alléluia. Il y a un temps pour mourir. Il y a un temps pour pleurer. Il y a un temps pour planter. Il y a un temps pour déraciner, il y a un temps pour abattre, il y a un temps pour guérir, il y a un temps pour danser, pour rire, il y a un temps pour se lamenter. Ce soir, 
nous pleurons. Nous pleurons avec notre soeur, Maman Irène, avec son mari. Alléluia. Nous pleurons pour notre enfant. Nous avons beaucoup pleuré et nous continuons à pleurer. Mais quelque part, nous savons que notre, notre fils a vaincu le, com, le, le bon combat. Alléluia. Par la résurrection de Christ. Il a été appelé avant nous. Alléluia. Ce n'est pas facile de voir son enfant mourir. La Bible déclare dans le livre d'Esaïe 54, verset 12 à 13, que la joie d'une mère, c'est le fruit de ses entrailles. Alléluia. La joie de Maman Irène est le fruit de ses entrailles. Mais aujourd'hui, dans cette situation, voir son enfant mourir avant toi-même, c'est triste. Nous voulons que nos enfants nous enterrent. Nous refusons à l'instant que nos enfants soient ceux là même que nous-mêmes nous enterrons. Alléluia. Je veux que chacun de nous soit honoré par ses enfants. Mais vois ton enfant qui meurt à bas âge, à l'âge de la fleur, à l'âge là où il a ses ambitions. C'est difficile. Mais ce soir, nous savons qu'il y a quelqu'un qui soulage, il y a quelqu'un qui soutient, il y a quelqu'un qui est sur les larmes. Nous pouvons lui donner des conseils, Maman Irène. Nous pouvons pleurer, nous pouvons la soutenir comme nous le faisons physiquement. Mais spirituellement, il y a quelqu'un qui est la personne de Jésus. Alléluia. Alléluia. Quelqu'un qui est la personne de Jésus. Tu pourras faire mieux que nous. Et ce soir, je vais interpeller ma soeur Irène pour dire que Jésus-Christ de Nazareth a démystifié le trône de Satan. Bien que la mort est parmi nous, mais il y a Christ qui vit au milieu de nous. Qu'elle soit fortifiée dans le Seigneur et qu'elle rapproche la personne de Christ plus ou moins davantage dans sa maison, dans sa vie, dans son cœur, afin que Christ vienne faire chemin avec elle. Christ vienne habiter dans sa maison. Christ vienne habiter dans sa vie, afin que ce qui lui a été arraché soit bâti. Alléluia. Je ne vais pas être long. C'est dur. Pendant que nous sommes en train de pleurer à l'air, il y a une soeur dans le nord qui est en train de pleurer aussi. Son même fils de 2 ans, 22 ans, il a eu le cancer du, 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 du sang. Il est décédé. Aujourd'hui, ils sont en train de faire sa veille. C'est triste de voir un parent enterrer son, son enfant à, à, à un âge vraiment précieux. Alléluia. Que Dieu garde nos enfants. Et que le Seigneur se souvienne de nos enfants dans la communauté. Ce fléau qui frappe la jeunesse. Que Dieu se souvienne de nos enfants. Qu'il les protège. Nous avons tous des petits-enfants. Si ton enfant n'est pas encore grand, ne, ne ris pas de ce qui, ce qui arrive à ta soeur. Il faut plutôt soutenir. Alléluia. Car tu ne sais pas de quoi les langues humaines. Ce soir, je veux simplement remercier la présence de tout le monde. Je veux dire merci à tout le monde. Merci à Jésus qui a fortifié notre soeur jusque-là. Si mes soeurs ont quelque chose à dire, si quelqu'un a quelque chose à y ajouter, qu'elle se sente libre. Alléluia. Il règne avec nous depuis 2013. Alléluia. L'association a été créée en 2012. Nous sommes là, nous faisons des œuvres, des œuvres humanitaires. Nous soutenons au pays des orphelinats, des hôpitaux, des écoles précaires. Alléluia. Et nous continuons toujours à aider au milieu de nous. Nous nous aidons aussi dans la joie, pas forcément la mort, dans la joie, dans n'importe quelle circonstance. Alléluia, nous nous soutenons. Quand il y a un Ivoirien qui a des situations, nous nous mettons ensemble. Notre maman même qui est décédée le mardi, on s'était préparé aujourd'hui, qu'on partait la voir pour soutenir la famille. Alléluia, aujourd'hui, de chez elle, on devait se retrouver ici. Mais malheureusement, la mort a frappé avant que nous nous, 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 nous rendions là-bas. Alléluia. Mais Dieu sait ce qu'il fait. Que Dieu vous bénisse ce soir. 
et que le nom de Dieu soit dit élevé parmi vous, et que Jésus-Christ de Nazareth visite chacun de vous. Alléluia. Que la paix de Christ soit avec vous. Amen. Amen. Vous êtes sûr que vous n'avez rien à dire. Alléluia. C'est vrai, maman, tu n'as rien à dire. Que Dieu vous bénisse. Ok. Pas plus tarder. Comme nous avons de coutume à faire, que nous faisons chaque fois que notre soeur est dans les difficultés, notre soeur est dans la joie, notre soeur a une situation, nous nous rassemblons et nous venons assister. Ce soir, nous sommes venus assister notre soeur avec une somme modeste. Alléluia. Pour dire qu'elle n'est pas seule dans sa situation. Pour dire que malgré les errants, malgré les fléaux, elle peut compter sur nous. Alléluia. Ses soeurs sont avec elle. Et nous tenons cette enveloppe. Alléluia. Elle verra le montant qui, qui s'y trouve. Alléluia. Gloire à Jésus. Que Dieu te bénisse. Voici cette enveloppe. Moi et mes soeurs, que nous venons te donner. Afin que tu puisses faire ce qu'il y a pour l'enfant. Alléluia. Que Dieu vous bénisse. Et que le Seigneur garde tes enfants. Alléluia. Amen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 
gentlemen. Bonsoir, mes frères yes, and young people. Bonsoir, les jeunes gens. My name is um, Joyce Jekka. I'm a community leader. Mon nom c'est Joël. Je suis. Je suis. Mon nom c'est Joyce. Je suis un leader de la communauté. Um, I got a call from another community leader. 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 Des leaders d'une autre communauté, et non, son nom c'est Marie-Laurence Tapé, notre soeur, notre grande soeur que nous, sommes, nous connaissons tous dans la communauté. She said, I'm going to India. There's a family I need you to go and see in Brooklyn. Elle me dit, ce jour-là, que je, je pars visiter une famille à Brooklyn. Um, she said, I'll send you the information, but before the week was out, Grada. Also called me and said, Joyce, can we go and see this family in, in the evening? And I said, Oh, I know which family you're talking about because Marie Laurence has already called me and sent me. Bien que Marie Laurence m'a appelé pour m'informer, mais mon ami Koudou, mon nom c'est Koudou, mon nom de famille, mais elle aime m'appeler Kodo. Koudou, qu'elle appelle Kodo. Donc Kodo m'a appelé, elle m'a informé aussi et j'ai dit à Marie Laurence, j'ai dit à quoi donc, oh Marie-Laurence m'a appelé pour cette situation parce que je lui ai dit, allons on va voir cette famille, Amen. Well, as a community, I'm African myself, I'm Kenyan. But you know, one is one Africa, so we're all one village. Amen. Nous sommes tous un. Je viens aussi de la de l'Afrique, mon mon pays. Je viens du Kenya. Amen. I, I came to the house. Je suis we greeted by Abel's mom. Amen. Je suis venu dans la maison à la famille pour visiter la maman et le papa de Abel. As I got upstairs, I looked. I said, Ah, I know you, it's Kwame. I know you because he's a community leader in the community, so I knew him already. Amen. Et quand je suis arrivé, j'ai réalisé que j'ai vu, j'ai vu uh, mon ami que je, je connais. J'ai dit, mais tiens, je le connais. Monsieur Adjé. So I came to see what support we could give as a community, as they were not getting any support at all. And um, when I sat down and they told me what they had been going through and that they had no support from, you know, the community, well, not really the, his community, the people high up in Hirsham, we said no. As a community, we need to come together. And it's a shame sometimes it takes this for us to come together. You know, you know in Africa, it, 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 when you have children, it's everybody's children. Mm. So whether you're auntie, uncle, whatever, you know you have to look after that child. So, you know, I've listened to all the stuff that he has done. He truly is you know, a legend. I think really what we need to do is come together as a community. We need to have some kind of legacy because he was doing so much. Whether it means we need to decide what it is, whether it means that we have an annual dinner, we raise funds, and then you have all your other children, own children, and they want to reach their dreams and we support them. We cannot let him have gone in vain. Amen. You know. So for me, it's about, you know, we need to know, I think, know each other more. Only last week, there's still some people in the community that don't know. You know, this is not right. This is not right. So, okay, right. So this, yeah, so this is not right. So, what I would like is that, you know, people start to, if there's people here that don't know each other, they need to, you know, get numbers and do whatever. But let's do something about it, because it could have been, it could have been my children, I've got 18 year olds and 26 year olds, it could have been your child, you know, and as, I don't know his name. Yeah. Sam. 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 As Sam said, you know, we need to come together. You 
know, so let's look for a solution, you know, let's look um, and, and let's talk to our children as well, you know, there, there's, there's times sometimes, you know, we don't have time to talk to our children, I'm not saying that you don't have time, but sometimes, you know, London, is, England is a busy world, it's not like back home. You'll be talking to grandma, you'll be talking to auntie, you'll be talking to whatever. Let's make, even if you haven't got time, make sure that somebody else that is close to you has time for your child. Because sometimes what they won't tell you, they will tell somebody else. So, um, we hear your pain, we feel your, you know, we feel your grief, we feel everything. We're all here for you. So, whatever it is that you want, You've, you've got to ask us, you know, because sometimes there are people that they're there, but they don't know what to say at these times. So, if you could, you know, if there's something you want, if there's something you need, if you want us to do something, just send someone if you can't say it, but talk to us. Because at a time like this, you need to talk, don't hold it in, just say whatever's on your mind. Yeah, don't let everyone say, oh, you know, it's been a week, it's been two weeks or whatever. You have to learn to grow with it, and it's going to take time. des frères, des frères et des sœurs qui sont avec moi. Et tout d'abord, je voudrais, au nom de notre famille à Manzer, vous dire merci à vous tous qui êtes là pour votre mobilisation spontanée autour de notre famille, autour de la famille éplorée, donc euh, le frère Aïdié et madame, pour cette euh, période douloureuse que la famille traverse. Alors, M. Aïdié et Madame appartiennent à la famille Amazé. Et chez nous, nous avons une manière coutumière d'agir. Nous sommes baoulés. Et selon la tradition baoulée, lorsque la famille est frappée, par le deuil, par la mort, il y a une manière pour nous de témoigner de notre soutien et de la friction que nous éprouvons vis-à-vis -vis de la famille et de Et donc, nous ici, au Royaume-Uni, au niveau d'Amanzé, ce que nous faisons, c'est que nous savons que lorsqu'il y a un décès, il faut, cela, il faut dépenser de l'argent. Et pour venir un peu en aide, après avoir pleuré, bien sûr, 
venir un peu en aide à la famille éplorée, nous essayons de mettre un peu la main à la bouche. Et ce soir donc, les frères et les sœurs la Mazère ont essayé de faire un effort à leur niveau et nous avons pu réunir une modeste sorte. Et nous sommes de 500, 515 livres pour venir en aide à notre frère et à sa femme qui traversent des moments difficiles. Et donc euh, nous allons le remettre cette enveloppe. Voilà. Et en fait, euh, nous savons que euh, cet argent ne, ne, ne représente rien devant la tête de l'être humain, mais c'est, comme je l'ai dit tantôt, c'est pour, voilà, essuyer les larmes et puis les aider surtout à faire face aux dépenses que nous voyons. Parce que venir dans cette église, faire de la nourriture et de la boisson, recevoir les gens, ça coûte de l'argent. Et donc c'est surtout pour ça que nous mettons de l'argent ensemble pour leur venir en aide. Donc voilà ce que nous avions annoncé au niveau de la noisette. Donc, euh, on va Pendant 
que j'ai fouillé, fouillé, je n'ai pas trouvé quelqu'un comme Jésus est en train de passer. Je voudrais informer tout le peuple de Dieu et tous ceux qui se sont déplacés que la famille, la famille d'Abel a acheté beaucoup de poissons, beaucoup de nourriture. Et comme on ne peut pas manger sur place ici, tout à l'heure, puisqu'on finit à 2h du matin, tout à l'heure, ne partez pas à la maison. Suivez-nous à la maison, à la maison, euh, à, à, au domicile de, euh, de la famille. Suivez-nous au domicile de la famille. C'est juste derrière. Je vous donne l'adresse, le 29 B, Elwell Road, Esprit tout NI. Donc tout à l'heure, tout le monde peut le monter pour qu'on puisse vraiment s'asseoir et qu'on continue euh, de se recueillir pour ces moments vraiment difficiles à supporter. Donc ne partez pas à la maison. Tout à l'heure, il y a de la bière. Pour ceux qui boivent de la bière, il y a tout sort de poisson. Donc euh, euh, ne partez pas. Et tu peux vous derrière, là, au domicile de, de la famille, pour qu'on puisse ensemble continuer à pouvoir euh, partager ce que la famille a prévu pour que nous puissions euh, être tous ensemble. Que le Seigneur nous bénisse.